What's going on there YouTube? This is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy, and this is the video unboxing of the new Nook. Now this is an interesting little e-reader because it gets rid of what we're used to seeing on both the Amazon Kindle and the original Nook reader, which was a way to navigate around uh, the e-ink display. The Amazon Kindle, as we know, has the directional pad with the keyboard down below, and the original Nook had this touchscreen. Now the touchscreen, when it came out, seemed like a great idea. However, it was a little bit slow, it consumed a lot of battery, wasn't incredibly responsive, and yielded a little bit of difficulty for reading books. Amazon has done away with that, excuse me, Barnes & Noble has done away with that and moved to a solid touch screen display on the e-ink uh, display as well. Now, one of the great things about the new Nook is it's $129 flat, 10 bucks cheaper than that of the Wi-Fi Amazon Kindle. One of the bad things is it's only available in Wi-Fi. There is no 3G version like there was in the original Nook. That being said, there is still the Pearl e-ink display, which uh, refreshes rather quickly and uh, gives you a lot of clarity and contrast in your books as well. One of the best things about the Barnes & Noble Nook is it really only refreshes the page every six page turns, and I'll show you exactly what I mean in a minute, which makes for extremely fast page turns, uh, making the Amazon Kindle 3 seem slow and making this seem like a dinosaur. So uh, it's a really, really stellar book reader, and we'll pop into the unboxing and features of it in just a minute. So. Uh, down here in this bottom fold, you're going to find yourself a micro USB cable for charging and connecting to your PC. Uh, this is really the only reason I uh, refuse to go to Amazon Kindle is because you can sideload books here on this. Uh, this only has two gigs of built-in memory, whereas the Amazon Kindle has four gigs, which by the way makes for a crap load of books. However, this uh, is expandable to 32 gigabytes of storage, which can yield you a ton of books, magazines, PDFs, and that's the great thing is with that expandable storage, you can read EPUB files, LIT files, a lot of files that the Amazon Kindle will not read. This can read files that are on your computer or old eBooks or eBooks you found for a lot cheaper on other websites, and that's why I like this. It's much like the Sony e-readers in that you don't have to buy from the store. You can get stuff side-loaded onto your device, uh, making your books a lot cheaper. We have the micro USB cable to charge and connect to your computer. You have a wall charger, much like we saw in the original Nook. This one is black rather than gray, but uh, the same principle holds true. Uh, in this top latch, of course, we will find the Nook itself. I've already powered it on and set it up. Uh, it will come with. Uh, it will come turned off, saying, "Hey." You need to set me up and charge me and get me going, and I've already done all that. You're going to find yourself a quick little uh, folding uh, quick start guide uh, to help you kind of navigate around the Nook and its basis. Of course, it's pretty easy to do uh, without that, and I have yet to even look at that. And I'm navigating around this like a charm. Go figure. So uh, we'll take a really close-up look at this and kind of see some of the features. You have your Nook logo up here. Again, this whole thing is touchscreen. Uh, it's not a capacitive touchscreen like we've seen in the past on iPhones and iPods and all those other devices, and it's not resistive, so you don't need a stylus. It's infrared, which is really, really nice because it doesn't destroy the clarity of the touchscreen on, or it doesn't destroy the clarity of the Pearl E-ink display. You still get those really, really rich colors. But it also isn't bad like a resistive touchscreen making it darn near unusable. It's still very fast, very snappy, and I really, really like the what or what they've done with it. There's real they say there's one button on the whole device, and really there's six, but uh, this is the main button. It acts as the home button, like uh, as your iPhone or iPod or iPad would, um, navigating to, hey, take me back home, let me go where I need to go. And uh, there you go. Now, um, you also have your page turn buttons here. Uh, you don't need to turn the page with these buttons. You can swipe and or tap, seeing as though the screen is touch sensitive. However, if you still like the classic way of turning pages, those buttons are there. And then the last button is here on the back. It's a power button, which is kind of weird. Uh, unlike a lot of devices where the button is on the actual top of the display, uh, this is kind of like in the back and you need to come at it from behind in order to make it uh, work. It's kind of weird. I'm not incredibly fond of it quite yet, but uh, I, again, have not tried this for more than 20, 30 minutes. So uh, the greatest thing about this, I would have to say, is the grip. Uh, it really, really is easy to hold. It's a little bit thicker than that of the Amazon Kindle 3. However, there is this uh, grip here back, uh, there is this grip back here, and it's extremely light. 
significantly lighter than that of the original Nook and a lot lighter even still than the new Amazon Kindle 3. And I think a lot of this is because it is tiny. I mean, look at that in comparison to my hand. It's really small, unlike the original Nook and the Kindle, which are bigger devices. That being said, this still has the exact same size of screen and you don't lose any real estate uh, upgrading to the new Nook, which is nice to see. So let's give you a little demo and tour of the actual device. Uh, you need to hit the end button in order to get the uh, display up and running. Uh, and then you need to slide to unlock much like uh, any Android device or iPhone device that we've ever used, uh, which is a little bit annoying that they want you to do that two stage deal. I mean, if you have the device off here, they want you to hit the end button and then swipe. Seems a little bit excessive to me, but I mean, that's the way they design it. Maybe they'll fix it in a future update. Now, if you hit the home button from the home button or the nook button, it brings up five tabs and these are always here uh, in your little nook. So wherever you are in the nook, you hit this and this little menu bar comes up. It gives you access to the nook settings, not just the settings of the book, but the actual nook settings. Um, it'll give you access to search, which you can search books, you can search your Nook, uh, you can search text with inside a book, you can actually search a website and it will open a hidden web browser, which is kind of funny. I will go to google.com here. And we click go and it does open this little hidden web browser. Of course, web browsing is not gonna be practical because it has to refresh every time you move on the page, but it is nice and handy that they did include that. So if you need to check your email on the go or something like that, that is capable and accessible of doing that. You can access the shop or you can uh, get the latest and greatest of eBooks. Uh, hit it again, you can access your library where you can see actual uh, copies of books you've bought and have downloaded onto the device. And then you have your home here and this will take you back to the splash screen where it tells you the date, the time, uh, the battery, uh, new reads, recommended reads, and what you're reading currently. So that's pretty cool. If you get this little guy up here in the corner, this will take you to uh, any book you're reading. So anywhere uh, in the OS, you click that um, little menu bar thing up there and it'll take you to the book and to the page where you're on. Now again, this is the greatest thing about the Nook and where it really does destroy the Kindle uh, in terms of refresh rate is uh, this new feature where it only refreshes the screen every six page turns. So let's go once, twice, three times. So it does it about every six. We'll go see how many we can get out of this guy. It's about five to six, sometimes it varies. This one was seven. So uh, it does vary every once in a while, but it, it doesn't refresh. I mean, on the Nook and on the Kindle, you're used to seeing it flash every time. And this is super fast at changing text. And it only does that black refresh every six or seven pages, which makes uh, for page turning extremely fast. You can navigate with ease uh, backwards and forwards. It's a lot faster than the previous generation Nook and it's even still faster than the current Amazon Kindle 3. So uh, it really is magnificent at reading books. Uh, you can hit the center of the page here uh, in order to do some special stuff. You can share uh, quotes with people on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, it's pretty funny. You can do a lot of social sharing. Uh, you can change, of course, the text, uh, the size, line spacing, margins of all your books, uh, the font as well. Uh, you can find more options here which allow you to uh, view the book itself, the title, the author, when it was modified, when it was added to the device and stuff like that, how many pages. Uh, you can find, search and find a specific item in the book. Um, you can uh, view the content, see all the chapters, and you can jump to uh, parts in the book automatically, which is nice to see. Uh, not only can you navigate with the buttons here, but you can also navigate touching on each side and of course swiping on each side, much like we see with the iPad. So it is a magnificent book reader. I really, really have taken uh, you know, liking to it already. I've only spent a couple hours with it, uh, but I do really, really like it from the get-go. It's significantly better than the Nook. I loved my Nook until tonight, and now I don't even want to touch this. This destroys it in every way, shape, and form. And Amazon Kindle 3, you better keep your eyes open because this is a serious contender and uh, as far as I'm concerned, is the best e-reader on the market currently. It's magnificent. Check one out. Uh, they're only 130 bucks. Absolutely magnificent deal. A lot cheaper in the long run than hardbacks and even paperbacks if you buy your books. Really like it. Cuts down the slim form factor of books. Uh, really a magnificent e-reader and I'm excited for what Barnes & Noble has to come. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe, rate, comment, and as always, stay snazzy. See you later, folks.